stand-up comedy is my favorite thing in the world to do, but when people find out about this, they're always like, oh my God, I can't believe you do stand-up comedy. That's so brave. But don't call me brave for doing comedy. You can call me brave for dropping out of college. <laughs> that was a risk, right? <laughs> Upper-class white woman with wealthy parents and no degree. Ooh. <laughs> That could have gone any number of ways it would have ended with things still being pretty good. <laughs> Just like mostly positive outcomes. I did go to Boston College for two years. I was there studying to be an English teacher. And I found out pretty quickly that teaching is kind of a racket. There's a lot of bureaucracy. You have to like learn how to use firearms. <laughs> And then in our second year, they told us that when you teach English, you actually have to read the books. And I was like, for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> Some of them are pretty long. But college wasn't a complete waste of $100,000. Because I got an eating disorder out of it. <laughs> I'm fine now, though I'm body positive. I believe in my body, my choice. I had a My Body, My Choice moment a few months ago. I got an IUD put in. Uh, and an IUD is a T-shaped thing they stick in your uterus. It like spins around and swats away sperm. <laughs> At least I think that's how it works. <laughs> and that was a big lifestyle improvement for me. Uh, I became a slut late in life because I never went to camp. <laughs> I feel like that's where a lot of that foundation is laid. So I've been making up for lost time. Also, like, my relationship with my dad kind of fucked me up because it was super healthy. <laughs> so I, like, trusted men for a long time. <laughs> but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm not crazy. <laughs> and I've been doing comedy for a few years now. I will say that it has definitely changed who I am. Willing to have sex with because for years I was sleeping with hot dudes, uh, and now I sleep with comedians. <laughs> so it's just different. <laughs> I definitely don't recommend sleeping with a comedian, uh, unless after sex you enjoy lying next to someone, watching them scroll through their own tweets. Because that's happened to me with more than one person. <laughs> They're just like scrolling, 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 and I'm like, oh, your index finger does work. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a weird time to find that out, <laughs> you know? And uh, I was sexually repressed for a long time because I was raised Catholic. And uh, we were really religious growing up. We went to church every Sunday. But I'm not Catholic anymore because like the older I got, I just realized that all that stuff's made up, which is why I'm really into astrology right now. <laughs> I'm like, show me Jesus Christ's birth chart, okay? <laughs> and then I'll tell you if he's worth worshiping. <laughs> I went to Catholic school for 10 years and that didn't really prepare me well for anything because uh, when I graduated eighth grade, I didn't know that there were still Jewish people. <laughs> I thought they were like the Mayans and the Aztecs. <laughs> learn about them in history. But then I went to public high school, I found out there are still Jewish people. Turns out to be a very important thing to know in this industry. Because <laughs> they like control everything. <laughs> but I love the Jews. You know, most of my friends are Jewish now. I can't say enough good things about them. But uh, I just have one major point of contention with Jewish culture, and that is that I'm pro-foreskin. Uh, anti-circumcision, kind of however you want to think about it. And I know that's controversial because I'm a woman and we're not supposed to have opinions. <laughs> but it's actually science. Uh, there's no medical benefits to circumcision, but I've debated with men on this. They'll kind of launch into their pro-circumcision rhetoric. So my ex-boyfriend and I would talk about having kids and he would say, well, if we have a boy, I want to circumcise him because he's my son and his dick should look like my dick. And my question is, when are they gonna be next to each other? <laughs> and what if he gets his dick from his mom's side? <laughs> Gotta consider these things. I've heard them all, but my favorite uh, defense of circumcision is when guys tell me that circumcised penises are better looking, that they look better. 
Uh, and for the men in the room, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but we're not hooking up with you because of how your dick looks. <laughs> All penises are weird and they make people uncomfortable. <laughs> That's why women are so quick to cover them with their hands and mouths whenever there's one present. <laughs> Just like, no. <laughs> Thank you. I am single. <laughs> I don't mind it though. I've been trying to sleep around less and I don't have a boyfriend, so now when I'm not out like trolling for dick, um, I just watch movies, which is a lot better for me. And I saw a movie recently that I really enjoyed. It was called Bad Moms. I don't know if anyone in here has seen Bad Moms. If you haven't seen it, a few people have. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's a movie about three moms. Three moms who are fed up and they decide that they're gonna be bad moms. And these moms are so bad. <laughs> They drink wine at bars. <laughs> yeah, they go to the movies while their kids are at school. And then they drink wine at home. And at the end of the movie, they realize that everything they do is just because they love their kids so much. So those are bad moms. <laughs> That got me thinking, well, if that's Bad Moms, then what's Bad Dads? You know, what's that movie? And I think Bad Dads is a movie about three dads who are fed up. And they decide that they're gonna be bad dads. So each of them individually murders their entire family. 